Hi there, here we are once again at the invitation of Jerome Marcus and it's an MBD special because we've tracked down not only one but two female drummers. Ooh. We've got with us, we're lucky enough to have with us Sharice Osei and Emily Dolan Davis. Hi. <laughs> uh, firstly, thanks for coming because I know you're both very busy at the moment. I think you both uh, tour with Brian Ferry and uh, Mika Paloma Faith. Yeah, Paloma yeah. Faith at the moment, yeah. And Cher Lloyd, yeah. Janet Devlin and Tricky. <laughs> and you're both probably at the beginnings of your career um, in a life sense, uh, but uh, you've achieved quite a bit already by the looks of things, uh, playing with some top names. How does that affect your um, social life? I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people of your age would be clubbing a lot, wouldn't they? Well, basically, <laughs> in short, you don't have one. Yes. You don't have one at all? Not, well, um, you can, but it's very difficult. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, when you're busy so much, you know, yeah. that's, you know, your time is taken up. Yeah. You know, travelling, gigging, touring, yeah. you know, your friends, you know, are very lucky to see you, really, if, if, you know, if you're around. Yeah, right. Does that affect relationships, that sort of thing, <laughs> or can you just not have them? Well... Or, uh, or, or well, do you have to have lots yes. of them, or, you know, how does that...? <laughs> yeah, hundreds, <laughs> well, no, I'm joking. A boy in every corner. <laughs> no, it's a nightmare. Yes, it's basically, yeah, I mean, in short, I've been um, touring since I was yeah. 17 in a yeah. band, you know, look, I'm the first big band, The Faders, we were signed to Universal. After yeah, that, I, I read about the faders. Yeah, yeah we yeah. did that. I toured with them for two and a half years. Then yeah. I got Mika, which was seven years. Yeah. And now I'm with Brian and Paloma, which has you know been this year. So basically, yeah, relationships have just been so difficult. You know, yeah. I've actually yeah. been single for you know for eight yeah. years because I've just. So I've it not makes had the time. life easier to be single rather than to have yeah. people messing each other about. And yeah, I wasn't in the country enough. I yeah. actually couldn't even start a relationship. You yeah. know, but. I, but I made that decision. Yeah, you know, yeah. This is, this is yeah. I'm married to my drums. This is my, you know, this this is my husband. When the schedule's grueling, you're married to the drums. But, yeah. but, you're happily married. Oh my gosh! Oh, I wouldn't so change happy. it for the world. <laughs> my God, yeah. And when you're on tour with these people, I mean, uh, traditionally people used to wind down by partying a lot on the tour and whatever. Mm. Is it more grueling now? Do you get the chance to do that a lot? It's kind of different these days. I think mm. the sort of that whole yeah. rock and roll lifestyle. It, People seem to be getting more and more healthy on tours. It's like now about yeah. juices on tour and things like that. And sort of people go out occasionally and party or whatever. But mainly it's just sort of making sure you're doing the job right. You know what I mean? And as long as yeah. it doesn't impact on that. Then it's I sort think of you also right. think like um, schedules are also quite tough nowadays. You know, like yeah. record companies and, th you know, they try to put as much in as possible. They put yeah, as many dates in a yeah, small yeah. period of yeah. time. So actually, you know, like there you're exhausted. You're tired. To... End of a gig, you just want to go to bed. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's not really rock and so roll. So it's not all. a big yeah. wind down period or anything like that. Not I particularly. Mean, I mean, no, no. But I do try and wind down after yeah. a gig, you know, because you are yeah. buzzing. I just, you know, tend to just, you so know, chill more... out, listen to some music or just, you yeah. know, get into my bed and. Maybe go to the bar at the hotel for one Maybe drink. Maybe go for one drink, yeah. But yeah. There's, there's not the So it's more to do with practicality than a change in culture. It's just simply. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, pretty much. At a relatively young age, has has much happened to you on the on the road, either on stage or off, that has uh, you've thought's a bit mad or dangerous even? Maybe a few things actually. Yeah, one thing that I remember um, when I was with Mika, so I've like we've I was with him for about seven years. Yeah. And um, we did a gig in um, in Tokyo, like a first yeah. gig in Japan. Yeah. And Mika did this thing where he used to like stand up on on my drum kit and like yeah. dance around, yeah. right? You know, while I was still playing. Oh yeah. Doing a big drum thing. And I remember this gig in Tokyo and I was playing, you know, and he got on the drums. And I don't know what happened. I still don't know, but he sun he suddenly like lost his balance and ended up just compl just literally just fall and, and he's he, like six foot four, massive yeah. guy. Just just <laughs> <laughs> demolishing my drum kit, he just <laughs> fell, and the whole thing, like, the was simple, thing, the whole, I remember it literally went like that, and everything just fell, and I was left with just the snare drum. Did you carry and, on? Uh, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was there, I just carried on playing with the snare drum, and my crew were, like, jumping, <laughs> Mika was like, and there was blood everywhere, blood, like, Mika really? cut himself, I cut myself, he fell onto me. How did you get out of that situation? Who, who came on? I mean, obviously, your drum tech put the drums back together, presumably. Yeah, the crew, yeah, yeah, yeah two <laughs> people jiving, crap, my cymbal was like falling yeah. everywhere. I was there, like, just laughing. I thought it was yeah. so funny. Yeah. I got bleeding, I was just like, ah, just Gracious me. On. And how did uh, Mika get round that embarrassment? I mean, did he just. <laughs> I don't know, he was also laughing. We were all just oh, laughing. Oh, good. So. Yeah, no, yeah, but it was, it, it, it was okay. And the crowd went with it, did they? They loved it. They were like, yeah. yeah I think it's yeah. crowds love it when things go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you have to do this more often. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. just special moments. Crazy. You know what I mean? Well, that is something that yeah, sounds something pretty... Yeah, something strange. Um, how about I you, Emily? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's you've had quite intense. <laughs> I, I feel a bit sort of like, oh, I need to have more experiences like that. <laughs> Mine is a, it's a bit more dull in comparison. <laughs> but um, I did this tour with Tricky, actually. Yeah. That, I mean, he is one of the most interesting artists to tour with, purely yeah. because 
every day something happens. <laughs> every day we had, you know, promoters, we had the tour manager with promoters up against the wall because they just weren't doing anything and like <laughs> just really mad stuff. And we did this gig, um, I can't remember where it was. It was a South American tour and we were at really high altitude. And the whole band by the end of the gig were just so breathless. They were waiting f with oxygen tanks off stage just oh to bl God. and literally got us off stage. And we were just, <gasps> it was just, it was crazy. Playing the drums like that must be a bit. That, Emily, that is dangerous. I have to tell you that it's very it's dangerous. Bit, it's fine. You'll be able to breathe. I mean, yeah, it's not great, but it was it was fun. You know, it's an experience. And then yeah. we, and, and a few other things, and sort of ended up being stranded in China without an MD or a guitarist, no keys player in a mainly electronic gig. We had a bass player, a backing singer, and me. No backing <laughs> tracks, nothing. And we had to pull together basically two shows. Uh, Did you play the show like that? Yes. Oh my God. The whole lot. <laughs> yeah. We ended up with one of the backline techs next to me on iTunes playing the backing tracks with front of house EQing out the drums so that we could play stuff. And the way that uh, Tricky runs his shows is once you start, you might play, say, a verse and a chorus, and then he'll point at people uh, what he wants to start or stop on stage. Just for sections, you know, oh, you'll I just see. want yeah. everyone to stop apart from the bass player or, or yeah. just the drums. Or oh, people in and out. Yeah. People in and out. It's like live DJing but with a band. It's amazing. I love it. Mm. And um, of course, we didn't have this capability because we literally yeah. had iTunes, but he decided in the middle of this gig that he wanted to do that anyway. So you had this poor backline tech just hitting the space bar every time he pointed at him. And it was just like, it was the most insane. How bizarre. And how long was the show? How long the show? We were contracted for two hours and we did two, two hours. hours. And it was, yeah, tricky uh, to be honest, gracious. probably the worst shows I've ever done in my life. Yeah. But we got through it. And but that was worst kind of in the, terms of playing and enjoyment or, or both? Musically, musically, just stress levels stress generally, level, yeah, 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 but you know, fun and like I say, he makes for good stories. What so. an experience as well. You Incredible know. experience. And, and the in kids. the middle of China of all places. Yeah, yeah. Keeps, it's 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 it. yeah keeps, keeps it interesting. Yeah. 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 I mean, have you ever been, had to play really sick or injured or anything like that? Um, um, I have to, actually, yeah. yeah. I played, um, I managed to get tendonitis in my left yeah. ankle. Because I was like, we were touring so much and gigging so much. Yeah. In between the tour, we were doing TVs, yeah. live TVs. So we were just playing. I don't know what happened. My left ankle, you know, my hi hat foot, just, you know, Seized yeah, up. got really swollen. Yeah. And so I had to, like, yeah, tour with this ankle. Yeah. You know, before the gig, I had to get a massage. After the gig, and I was, it was, yeah, really painful. So that was definitely. But like, you struggled through, obviously. Yeah. Or, or, uh, you know, as bravely as drummers yeah. do. Or, yeah, you you get I through. I think I've had a few as well because I used to have really bad shoulder problems from when yeah. I was about fourteen, and it was literally only just from carrying gear around yeah. town to go play gigs. Yeah. Uh, not that long ago, actually, about a year ago, I was playing a gig in a very random place, and the middle of the second set of my lower back went and I just was like <laughs> oh my god it was in the middle of a song as well and I was like I, d I don't know what to do and I had to sort of find a position to play in, in the middle of a song oh, right so it was oh my the god, most Emily. horrific thing it was awful I managed to get through the gig but I, I and the band didn't even notice how nice is that I was like yeah guys don't worry about me awful they didn't it notice so, at all yeah it was really that was horrific that was horrible have you ever had the panic side of you, you know, when, you, when you're playing and you suddenly think, how do I do this? What am I, what am I doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> happens. That time. Yeah, your mind can suddenly just go completely yeah, blank. Goes, where yeah. am I? And you go, I, oh, my God, what are we in? doing? Yeah. What am I doing? Yeah. Who yeah. am I? What is this? <laughs> and suddenly you have to go, oh, yeah, OK, OK. You have to yeah. bring it. Yeah, it happens sometimes. And that's the problem with juggling a lot of gigs as well. Sometimes yeah. you're in the middle of a gig and you're just like, wait, where, Which, who am I playing? Who am I with? Who yeah. am I with? Yeah. yeah. But if you stop doing what you're doing. Everyone's going to know. Yeah, the band will, yeah, no, that's not yeah, you won't last very long to do that. <laughs> How do you get around that? Literally, just think of something else, or we have to kind of, you know, like just, bring yourself just, back into yeah. the song. You know, center yourself and go, okay, I'm playing for this person. I'm in this song. Yeah. Okay, and cool. And trust yeah. your instincts because yeah. at the end of the day, usually you've played it a hundred times before yeah. anyway. So yeah. Yeah, it's usually muscle memory. You, yeah. Usually, if you just trust your body, that yeah, your body's going, no, we're going yeah. to a chorus now. It's like, all right, yeah, your I hope hands. So. Are yeah. And there we are. Okay. Well, it's funny, muscle, yeah, yeah. Like muscle memory, isn't it? When you're muscle memory, the, the yeah. most people I've spoken to uh, have had that muscle memory problem when it starts to slip or they start to panic or whatever. Mm. Yeah. Um, but would you say that um, having been playing for what? Is it 15? No, it's 15. Yeah, so we started when we were 11. 15 years? Yeah, yeah. 15 we're, years we're, each. We're so we're would you yeah. say it's the most therapeutic thing you can do? Or, yes. or, <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely means you can, yeah, yeah you know, bet yeah. out any aggression. Yeah. If you're stressed, Go to your drums. Yeah. You know, imagine, you know, the sad drum is somebody's head. If somebody's yeah, annoying yeah. you, just 
It's great. That helped us you. a lot in school. Yeah, <laughs> sure. it's, yeah, no, definitely therapeutic. Yeah, it you, is. It's, I, I always remember we saw. Do you remember we saw Andy Newmark do a clinic, and he? Do you remember he was in Mark Dolberg's room, and he was just sitting there, and he goes, "I love just playing time because I'm convinced that heals me." Oh. Yeah. And I just thought, do you know what? That's so. That's so true. Mm. If you can just sit there and play time, it's almost meditative. It's the most it's natural thing you can do, isn't it? It really so, is. And for us, like as soon as we yeah. both sat behind a kit when we were 11 years old, it was like, oh, this makes sense. Oh, this is it. This yeah. is, oh, I love oh, this. This is amazing. Yeah. I want what to do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. Do you think yeah. that that's in everybody or do you think? I think it chooses you, yeah. actually. Don't yeah, you think? Absolutely. I think, yeah. I think it's just everyone has something. you just got to find it. Yeah. And because, yeah. you know, both of us, we tried lots of different instruments yeah. and different things, you know, art or, I mean, I, I, I was convinced I was going to be a footballer for a few years. And right. I, I used to train at Arsenal and do yeah. all of that. Then I found out that I couldn't play on the men's team and all my heroes were men. So I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, I was actually a dancer and a singer yeah. before. Yeah. yeah, and an actress. Really? I thought, yeah, yeah. I never knew that about you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I used to get to audition, Sylvia Young. Oh, and you, you she know, did, yeah. yeah. So I was convinced I was going to yeah. do that. And then I went to secondary school and, you know, yeah. Oh no, this is that's it. That's what it is. Oh. oh, never mind. So it's one moment of bang and that. I'm not kidding, yes. I remember one... the moment. I yeah, yeah, it. I remember it, yeah. Remember yeah. our first time. Because that's when we, we met, basically. We, we started playing yeah. on the same day. We went to the same school. And so we both went to this drum club at yeah. school. We've heard, you know, like in the announcement. Yeah. Went along. And then, yeah, yeah, I remember <laughs> us being there. I mean, these little beaters, they weren't even drumsticks. Oh, the red beaters with the black. Yeah. <laughs> I remember being like, this isn't right. Yeah. This isn't like a drumstick. <laughs> You know? So you've been together on this journey quite a, quite a bit since then? Day one. Yeah, since, since we were, day one. Yeah, we started yeah. drums on the same yeah. day and then we used to practice yeah. together. Yeah. And basically like, we used to go into school um, at seven in the morning before all the teachers got there. Yeah. And the music teachers gave us the keys to the school to get really? in. Yeah, yeah we get in there, practice an hour before school, yeah. lunch time, lunch. break time, after, after school. school. For yeah. an hour. So we'd, so basically for seven years? Yeah, for seven years, in solid. Right. And yeah. we used to do drum duos together. Yeah. We used to we used play to... with all the bands in school. Yeah. We used to play at yeah. concerts. Yeah, and concerts. then we were in bands outside of school. Yeah, then we started being bands outside. And, and we were blues like jams. So it sounds to me like, you know, the likes of Mika, Paloma, Faith and whatever are pretty well <laughs> ju justified. <laughs> well, uh, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd hope so. So, I, I mean, going back to this um, therapy thing, would you say that then drummers aren't really mad? Or do you uh, think that... Do I don't know. I think... Well, I think that... I think to pick up any instrument for a start, you've got to be a little crazy because it ends up becoming your first love in life. And you yeah. just... You are obsessed by it. And it, you and can't we help it. We yeah. are. We were. We still are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and the other thing, I don't know if it's just drummers, but a lot of drummers we know, we're quite... Uh, OCD about a lot of things and yeah. I think that helps with learning because you know you're yeah. very meticulous and so in that sense you probably are a bit mad because not many people sort of think about that and get so obsessed yeah. with something yeah and also you know like carrying all this gear around yeah, yeah. you've got to be that? crazy yeah. from place to place oh, yeah. first one in the venue yeah. last one there yeah. and you know like you start doing this instrument and you upset everybody with loud noises yeah. for yeah. years. Yeah. You know, it's like... It's not practical. It takes no. a long time to play to a standard where you can play with other people. You've so. got to be really dedicated to yeah. play the drums. Yeah. You know, you've got to really, yeah. you know, go for it. Go for it. You have to. I remember yeah. the first gig we ever did together mm. when we were yeah. 11. I remember walking into the, the venue that we were playing. I remember being so nervous. I've never been so nervous in my life since then. Um, it was Lee Valley. Lee Valley. Battle of the Bands. Battle of the Bands. In fact, yeah. Bob Henrik yes. was oh. judging yes. this. What was he? He didn't pick our band, actually. Uh, I had the real bone to Yeah, we, we, we've never uh, let that go. We've never let it go uh, in like 15 years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Bob. Poor Bob. You know, Battle of the Bands and everything. Yeah. It went this big swap over. So Emily played the first half of the song. Yeah. yeah. It, it was Santana, Europa. Europa. <laughs> you oh. played the first half. And then we you did this fill, this epic Emily film. did a fill. What was the fill? Do you remember? I came in and finished the fill off <laughs> and carried on, right? <laughs> so this big moment, and we, you know, like came to the gig, and we were all, you know, really nervous. Our first big gig, you know, we we're eleven yeah. years old. We were like, oh my god. <laughs> when uh -huh. It comes to the moment, and they blew out all this dry ice. Yeah. And we were like, <laughs> so I get on the thing. Yeah. yeah, I get on the drums, and then you know the, and the, the smoke, smoke clears. Is. All yeah. of a sudden, I'm on the drums. Yeah. The judges so were just going. What? It, it's sort of because Emily's obviously blonde. I'm black. We look very different. Yeah, the I used to have long blonde hair. It was like, yeah. I'm what's just happening? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, so there's a white young. What's just happened? Yeah. <laughs> and now there's a black girl on the drums. <laughs> They weren't expecting that to happen. No, that was our big that moment. Was our big moment. moment. And that's how we knew. Is that the only time you played on stage together? No, well, in school concerts, we used to always play together. Yeah, yeah. we used to do these uh, drum duos. Oh yeah, God. Did a recent one actually for the Jordan Terrace. 
um, charity um, yeah. event. And yeah, it was for Teenage Cancer Trust. Yeah, t yeah Teenage right. Cancer Trust. And it was for Jordan Terrace, yeah. that young drummer um, who died at he 15. Died. Yeah. yeah. It was a concert, it, sort it of memory his, of him. It was his 21st, it would have been his 21st right. birthday. And uh, yeah. so Mike Dolbear put on a whole bunch of drummers. So it was yeah. us, uh, Ash Stone, Mark Richardson, yeah. Robin Guy, Robin Guy uh, Phil Gould. Phil Gould, and, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we came and we did our first drum duo for 10 years. Yeah, we haven't played together for 10 years. Yeah. And we just thought, okay, let's get it. Let's do this. So we had. Kitch, and you'd. Yeah, yeah, we used to do, we, yeah, it was yeah. like we were 15 again. It we were like, really you know, weird. making up this, you know, this piece. Yeah. You know? I was yeah. quite nervous before that, actually. I was so nervous. Well, because all the, you know, drummers were in this. Yeah, a room full of drummers yeah. is like the worst thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they're your mates. You're like, oh, you're really good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you, what do you think about this fraternity with drummers? Do you know that, that love it. drummers get on very, very well? It's like a kind of special Yeah, it's more of a community. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, more yeah. of a... Yeah, I think more so than any other instrument. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure why that is, but I think, I have a theory. Yeah. I think it's because nobody in the band likes the drummers, so we all have to be <laughs> each other's friends. Yeah, we're all one dysfunctional family. That's it, that's exactly yeah, and what in the we UK, are. there's such a great drumming yeah. community. Yeah. You know, everyone knows each other, you know, how you doing, what you know, what you're up to, you know. You, yeah. But there isn't that with other instruments. No. There is not. There yeah. Bass players, you know, you don't see bass players and guitarists. No, hanging out. You know, together. hanging out. It's yeah. just, it just doesn't, doesn't happen. There happen. is something yeah. deep rooted. In you, there's some primitive. There is something, there is, I believe. There is something. You, yeah, yeah, there is something in your personality. In, you know, like in your makeup. That's true. I'm wondering if that's anything to do with this fact that you can't seem to not want to touch a drum kit. It's really weird. <laughs> even if it's even if you don't play the drum, someone comes past you and they're yeah. tapping it or tapping your cymbal or something. Yeah. There's all something rather yeah. mischievous about drums. This is yeah. like, oh yeah, I'll tap it. You know, as I walk past. You know. Also, it makes a yeah. sound. You don't. You don't go past. You've got to plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. go past a guitarist and then go like yeah. that on his string. Yeah, I think it's like it takes a certain type of character. Yeah. to play the drum you know yeah. like we're at the back of the stage yeah. you know you've got all this stuff around you you have to carry yeah. it all around you know it takes a certain type of character to yeah. want to do that to be a guitar yeah. at the front of the stage this you're loud it. you've got you know the certain got characters like, goes with certain instruments yeah. I think but yeah. being a drummer you've got to be at the back you've got to be solid, solid. You're, yeah. You are the foundation. You are the foundation. The There's quite a responsibility, isn't it? It is, but yeah. it doesn't get a lot of credit. But that mm. kind of is okay sometimes. You know, you kind of you secretly know. And yeah, you take like, that though. You take yeah. something you go, in your character. This is great. What do you think about female drummers? Do you think there should be more girls drummers? Do you think there's um, perhaps even more potential for passion in it in a in a female than a male, perhaps? It's funny actually because some people say that, like male musicians yeah, do say that. Yeah, male musicians do say that maybe. You, you know, maybe you do have more a different, empathetic. yeah, a different angle. I yeah. think perhaps, you yeah, know, more empathetic. But to us, you know, music has like you know, no gender. There's no, no. gender. Yeah, no music. gender. To, no, no, yeah, no, and, no. And it's all we've ever known. So it's kind of a, it's a funny one when we sort of get asked things like that. But yeah, to I us think, it's normal, isn't it? Yeah, to us it's normal. Yeah. And I think you know there aren't as many female drummers, but there are more on the up, which is yeah, there's, great. Yeah, there's lots yeah. more, isn't there? Yeah, because there's, when we were kids. There were none. Our, yeah. The only people we had to look towards, not that they were bad, they were brilliant. We had so Cindy, Sheila E, Cindy Blackman, Terry yeah, yeah. Lynn Carrington, yeah. and that was cut, hit Evelyn Glennie. Evelyn Glennie, but, percussionist. Yeah, but in the UK um, there weren't really any. Oh, Dawn Adams. Dawn Adams. There was Dawn Adams. Yeah, we had Dawn Adams. We had lessons with her, didn't we? We had percussion yeah, we lessons that's with Dawn Adams. Yeah. But yeah. there just weren't that many. And, and, you know, but that's fine. I mean, our heroes are men, but that's just sort of incidental. Yeah. What about know? Karen Carpenter? Yeah, yeah, she was yeah. great. Nice because she fantastic. was fantastic, wasn't she? I mean, she, she yeah, actually she apparently uh, only wanted to play the drums. She only sang because she was told to sing. But, they, <laughs> you know, she, she wanted to play the drums most yeah. of all. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing out. is, it was always seen as a primarily male and masculine kind yeah. of instrument. So yeah. And it's still fairly, you know... It is. Yeah, the drums are generally yeah, a male-dominated instrument. But, yeah, but more now and more it's, sort it's, of, it, yeah. it's a bit more accepted. I mean, you know, yeah. especially as us as kids, we had a lot of stuff said to us and you know I can say, I don't know about you, yeah, but definitely. I can say for sure I would not be playing drum still if it wasn't for this girl here. Like, Aww, there's no way. Nice. Because it's tough. It's hard yeah. enough anyway taking up an instrument. Yeah. But yeah. if you don't have someone there who either mm. can understand what you're going through or can just go, no, that's wrong. Yeah. Don't listen to that. You know, and Sharice yeah. was that person for me and you know, I consider ourselves so lucky, so lucky. So you've to given each other yeah, good me and Emily, advice. You know, we're our support network. Yeah. yeah, you know, we same. Without Emily, I wouldn't. You know, I really wouldn't be here. You know, yeah. and our parents. Like yeah. my parents, are like my parents. Yeah. My parents our are families. Like, we've got like yeah. two families, yeah. two big we're families. So you know. unbelievably lucky. It's just yeah, but it's, right. it's kind of nice that you both play for Brian Ferry as well. It's just, yeah, it's <laughs> quite it's quite nice. You know, Brian likes it. He gets to have two favorite yeah. drummers. He's ever done that's his dream. Does he know your folks as well? I mean, you. <laughs> no, he again. doesn't. No, he hasn't met, no, he hasn't met, met them yet. Oh. Yeah. No, no, isn't it? no, but I think, like, I do agree with you in that, you know, mm. like, it is really tough. 
Yeah. You know, it's hard anyway. Yeah. And particularly being a female, you know, like you're always like, yeah, having to prove yourself. Yeah, I was going to say, is that, and, yeah. Yeah. Has that been harder? The, well, we use it as a way to motivate us for yeah. fun love. Like, yeah. actually, makes you work harder. And the thing yeah. is, actually, is that ever since we were kids, we were always told, right, these are the base level things that you need to be able to do as a drummer. First of all, you keep time. That's your only job. Secondly, <laughs> your women, if you want to be taken seriously, hit, hit them. them hard. Actually, hit them. <laughs> yeah. Hit them hard. Hit, please, please hit do them. Do you know what? What I, I realised, what we both realised, and that's not a gender thing. There are drummers out there that you watch and you think, it's going to be great. And they go to hit the drum, and you're like, yeah. are you, what are you doing? They're yeah. meant to be hit, come on, yes. hit it. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's like, you know, there's certain times and, of course, you know, yeah. you know, different levels you have to play at. But, you yeah. know, if you're doing a big pop gig is, is what you know, You've got to give, they've got to be heard, got, they've got to be, yeah. They've got to be heard on the stage. Solid yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 You're the foundation. Are you, yeah, you're leading the band. You yeah. are the leader. You're yeah. telling yeah. them where the one is. So you've got to be really, you know, And you've got to, it's got to be a statement as well. It can't be. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Unless you're playing backroom jazz or something, or, or something. Yeah, but even, even then, then you've still, still got to be on the nut. On the, you on know, the yeah, you've got to still, be with that bass player, and if you're not there, that's yeah. it, the gig's over. Hi. Mm. Hope you enjoyed the first part of our Mad Bad and Dangerous special interview with um, Charisse Say and Emily Dolan Davis. Lovely girls, great drummers. Uh, second part coming up soon. Uh, for all our videos, please click there, do your usual thing, share, that kind of thing. Um, in the meantime, you know, cheers. What oh. the blazes is going on here? Go on! What the hell are you cut, doing cut, here? I gotta get, cut, cut, get gotta move, gotta go, gotta go. We are ready to go. Um, okay. Just forget. Forget there's any, we don't exist. Forget there's anybody else in here yeah. at all, any lights or no <laughs> bits of paper with words on yeah. and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. you got you it. Rolling? Yeah, don't look at me, look at that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I didn't go into it yet. Yeah. <laughs>